Shalom, shalom. Still with I and I, so we're going to continue with this. This will be the third part of this particular this particular lecture. Um, the Canaan, Canaan then, or the land of Canaan then, Shashamani, Ethiopia, Ethiopia today. And this is based on the RSS, Rastafari uh, Sabbatical Study, number 37, known as Shalach. Shalach is our is our Hebrew password. This is the key word in the Hebrew. Um, Bamarinya, we could probably say lock or tilkalachu, but we'll start out with this basic and then we'll, we'll build on that foundation. Now, we were here in Numbers chapter 14, and what we had left off was at verse 44. And I was commenting on how interesting this is. So, hopefully, if you watch this part, check the two previous part, at least the previous portion, because we're trying to connect, you know, connect the dots, so to speak. So here's where after Moses and Aaron told the people because they had listened to the the the, the ten false witnesses or the ten spies that brought back lies and not to those who had true and living faith in Jah and in his word, such as Caleb and, 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 and Joshua, that they were told that they're going to get their wish to die in the wilderness. If they want to die in the wilderness, you understand, they're going to get their wish, but they're going to be slain by their enemies. When they heard all of this, the people, it says in verse 39, it says that, and Moses told these sayings to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Now, you have to pay attention to that word greatly. They mourned. To mourn is one thing. To mourn greatly, trying to emphasize how, how deeply that cut them to their spirit. Because they had recognized, they had recognized um, the judgment and also consciously, subconsciously, or whatever, that they were wrong. So in verse 40, they rose up, the people, right? They rose up early in the morning and they got them into the top of the mountain. Now, they didn't go to mountains. They went to a specific mountain. Now, if you go through the scriptures, they were not supposed to enter into the mountain, not the mountain of the Lord. Uh -huh. Not the mountain of the Lord, because only Moses really, basically, and maybe Aaron, you know, on occasion, but mainly Moses was the, was the one who was, you know, there was an assumption of hierarchy, you know, assumption of hierarchy, a chain of command sort of a system. And Moses was the one that Jah communicated with. But a lot of folks would be like, well, we all Jah's people, and, and, and I could also do the same thing that you're doing. And Jah says, no, that's not so. You understand? Know but here down the people take it upon themselves. Somebody had the bright idea to, well, we'll go and speak for ourselves. Maybe Moses, you know, he never did like us. You know, the people had a bunch of crazy shit in them, their heads. Excuse my language, but it was like having crazy, you know, um, defecation. It was, you know, it was no fertilizer, you know, you no know, usable fertilizer. But anyway, here... They, they went up into the mountain, and they were saying in the mountain, Lo, we are here, verse 40, we will go into the place for which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. It's like when things get bad enough in the Americas, and, and hopefully I and I would have, like Joshua, have crossed that Red Sea, you understand, um, or, or the Jordan River, rather, the Jordan River. And the River Jordan is almost like the Atlantic Ocean. It's like must be that River Jordan. I, I, I haven't figured that one out just yet. But it's still to cross over, that whole act of Abra, Hebra, Hebrew crossing over. That a lot of folks are going to, in time to come, are going to be thinking about these sort of messages and, and might be saying the same thing like these ones when they recognize it might be too late, like it's too late for the Israelites right here. And so Moses says in verse 41, he says, uh, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? In other words, what mischief are you up to now? What nonsense are you doing now? But it shall not prosper, is what Moses says. It's not gonna it's not gonna profit you anything. It's like you're wasting your time. It's like folks saying, Oh, um, there's this group of one or this one is doing something for all Rastafari. You hear about these kind of things, like they're going to the AU and they're speaking for all of us. No, they're not, they're speaking for themselves. 
You understand? Or maybe their organization. You understand? If they were speaking for us, they would come to us and, you know, do things in the proper way. You know, so, so this is similar to what's going on right here. Now these guys are going over there. Moses says it's not going to prosper. Go not up. In other words, you're not supposed to go, be going up there to begin with, but besides, the Lord is not among you. He's not among you. You're not going to find him there in the mountain, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. In other words, John left because if he stayed in the residence, as he told, said to Moses, these people are provoking me. I'm getting tired of their, their lack of faith. I mean, it's like if he dealt with any other people, it would not be so. And you don't know, like, we said the Jews who call themselves Jews, right? They picked this up, and they kind of know it's not really them, but they say, hey, it works for us, and it works for them. And, and this people here, we lecture, we teach, so forth and so on, and we give thanks that John still, you understand, is calling his sons and his daughters. But we're to learn from this right here, right? He says, go not up. For the Lord is not among you, that you be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword. So he's pronouncing judgment in that sense, or sentencing in a sense, the sentencing and now judgment, reminding them of the judgment. Because you are turned from the Lord, because you are turned from Jah. You're turned from his word. You have to remember, they didn't have the word so much written then. But they knew what they had heard. They knew what they said, yes, I will, I mean, we will do. And then later on, they get a change of heart, so forth and so on. But uh, you know what I heard? Yeah, I know. I know I was saying that before. But you know what? I, I just heard something, such and such. You heard what? You understand? I mean, so what? Okay, even if it's so, you understand? Ja is still, Ja is true. You understand? So you don't allow hear what you hear. If it contradicts the divine oracle, the word of Jah, the oracles of Jah, don't 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 place confidence in that. Don't place trust. Don't do not believe it. Do not accept it as true. But they already did that. So Moses says, because you are turned away from Jah, therefore Jah will not be with you. Because you turned your backs on him, he's left. He's not there. You're on your own. Verse 44, where we had left off. But they presumed. They presumed. Well, I presumed, I assumed, you know what I'm saying? They presumed to go up into or to the hilltop. They, they still presumed. So Moses saw them prowling their way and said, what you doing now? It's not going to work. You know, it's not going to process. Wait, wait, what you doing? And he tried to explain to them. But they still went about their business, you know, still, still being the hard-head of disobedience, right? Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. So Moses didn't follow along their foolishness. Him, the ark, you understand, stayed in the camp. The ark and Moses stayed in the camp. Then, can you say then? Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, which dwelt in that hill and smote them. You know what smoke means? It means like now they just say they got murked. You know they got they got murdered. They got killed. They were killed. You understand? The 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 Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smote them and discomforted them. You understand? Oh, they thought they was uncomfortable before, right? Well, well, the Amalekites and the Canaanites really discomforted them even to Horma. Even to Horma, another destination. This is, this is wow. This is but but this is what has happened, and we can learn a lot from this. You know, we're saying that what happened in the Canaan then. You understand, know and what is happening in Shashimani in Ethiopia today, vis-a-vis -vis repatriation, vis-a-vis -vis the Ethiopian World Federation, vis-a-vis -vis the land grant, vis-a-vis I and I Rastafari and the lost sheep. You understand, who still call themselves Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, and Karen Smith, Jones, Johnson, Michael Jackson, George Jefferson's sort of type of names there. Now, this now ends chapter 14, and in chapter 15, it, 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 it subscribed the years of wandering. You, you see, so because they didn't enter in, right, now they had to wander. It's almost like what goes on, what's been going on these 40 years. You know, I've been hearing, like, blacks been moving from the north back down to the south. 
you know, like Atlanta, blacks are moving from Atlanta over to Texas, and then they're moving from over here, from Chicago over to Boston, and, you know, this back and forth to Florida and California, and then over here, they're bouncing around. So they're wandering in the wilderness. It's the same old, same old. You know, like, they, they, they're trying to find some place where, where the peck of wood is not going to be the peck of wood. You know, almost like, and they're running into these same Amalekites and these very same Canaanites. You know what I'm saying? They're running and, and spiritual types. Let, let's just say it like that for right now. Spiritual types. Now, it's interesting because we've said this before, and this is the whole point of um, Bar Midbar, Bar Midbar, that the wilderness was part of the necessary discipline. So the wilderness, you understand? Know the wilderness, this is the promised land, but where we're at in the Maracacas is the wilderness was a necessary part, you understand, know a part of the necessary discipline of the redeemed people. So even though we say, I'm not Rastafari, okay, we like that redeemed people, but there is a necessary discipline, right? But not the years of wandering. This is the key difference I want you to understand right here. In, the, in our similar situation here in the Americas, that the wilderness was a part of the necessary discipline for a redeemed people. It was almost like a hardening up. It's almost like in the military or army when you have classes, like you have the classes where you learn everything, pen and paper, and then you have to go out there, you know, in the field. You understand? And then you might go on a march. So this kind of discipline, when Israel went on that march to the wilderness, it was a part of the necessary discipline of such a redeemed people, but not the years of wandering. See, there's a big difference, and I want you to, you know, you know make a note of that. Wilderness, necessary discipline, you right? Wandering was not the intention, but wandering occurred because of the lack of faith. You understand? Lack of faith, therefore, with well, lack of faith, you're a coward. You understand? Lack of faith, saying you're of Jah and, and carrying the name, saying you're Rastafari, and you're not really building your house on a sure foundation, and, 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 you, and you're not hearing his word, and you're not building up your faith. You know what I'm saying? You cannot have no fruition. You know what I'm saying? You're in a state of unbelief, and therefore it's wander. There's another phrase that goes with that word, wander. You might have heard of it before. It's called wanderlust. Wanderlust, right? And, and instead of wander, it's like wandering whatever your soul lusteth on. You know what I'm saying? So going from this to that to so forth and so on. It's like when the Bible says in the New Testament, it says, and these are they who are forever learning. You understand? It's like silly woman. It says forever learning, but never able to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. You see, because one day, oh, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. But what are you doing with what you've already learned or, or how are you, uh, what are you doing with what you've already learned and what you know? It's like, give me more, give me more, give me more. But what are you doing with what you've been given? You know, how well do you already know what you should have learned or what you say you learned? You understand? So these years of wandering were not a part of a necessary discipline. The latter, the wandering, was entirely due, as it says even right here, to unbelief, to a lack of the faith that his majesty speaks. If we are his sons and daughters, then his standard must become our standard. Otherwise, we're carrying that name illegally, unlawfully. It's like identity theft. We're saying he's our father, but we are either disobedient children. I mean, what is the case? But... When the disobedience and unbelief, that's what leads to the wandering. And that's what we have at the people, with the people at the Kadesh Barnea, this place, the Kadesh. And before we, while we still have time in this, here's the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. The Holy Spirit had directed me to look up, remember I was saying to you all that the, 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 the names of the places, when you come across these names of places, and this is why the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is a good resource here. Um, you come across names of places like Adesh, Yovas, and I know we don't speak Hebrew actively right now, but this is how you start out with the baby steps, Yovas, and learning the names 
you know, these names you come across. And somebody say, well, what does um, Kadesh mean? You understand? What does Kadesh mean? It sounds like Kedus. It sounds like holy. Well, for good reason that it sounds like holy. You understand? Because it comes from that same Afro-Shemitic um, root. So right here we have Kadesh. K-A-D-E-S-H. And let's just touch on this right here because this is the key name right here in this study, the Kadesh. Now it's called the Kadesh Barnea. We'll deal with Barnea part secondarily. But let's deal with Kadesh primarily. Kadesh primarily, right? Kadesh, which, like we said, basic Kedus, I'd have holy um, 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 Kaddish and the Jews say the liturgy or their form of liturgy Kedase, our Ethiopic form of the liturgy as well here it means clean, pure bright, holy that holy, idea of holy set apart sacred, sanctified that idea of separate set apart, consecrated the idea of holy set apart and a sanctuary a sanctuary, right? So we need to understand this in a sense of this was the holy sanctuary in the wilderness, right? The holy sanctuary in the wilderness. Now, as a place, the Kadesh was 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 very old place on the southeastern border of the land of Canaan. In the wilderness of Paran, also was known as Zin, Zin. Right, zin. Some say sin, and but it could be have a z sound or a sin. Right, it is the same place as ein mishpat, as the ein ein or n. Here you see en. They say en mishpat, but in the Hebrew is ein or in in mishpat. Mishpat mishpat means the 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 eye of judgment or the well the well of judgment. But that's also another phrase to, to get into a little bit more detail on. Now, Genesis, that's from Genesis 14 and 7. So the same place in earlier time was called the Ain or the Ein Mishpat, right? The, the eye or the well of judgment. Let's put this right here because we're going to deal with Kadesh from the time that we have right here. E-N, Ain or Ein Mishpat. Mishpat. You might say Mishpat, but that's that's an Anglo that's an Anglo Gentile way of pronouncing it, if you will. You you know, but that's Genesis fourteen and seven. This is the very same place. This is the very same place, right? Very same place. This is the older name, right? And this is the name within Israelitish. You know what I'm saying? Um, within the wilderness time here in Numbers in the book of Numbers, right? Now, it also was known as the Kadesh Barnea, a city on the southern border of Judah. A city on the southern border of Judah. Now, back to Shashimani for a moment. <laughs> Shashimani is in the south, too. Just, 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 a, just a, point of, a point of reference right there. It's in the southern part, right? The Ormo, the Aruna south. Right, a city on the southern border of Judah, and it was allotted, it was given to the tribe of Yehuda, according to Joshua 15 and 3. Now, Abraham, quote, he dwelt between Kadesh and Shur in Genesis 20 and 1. Now, the spies were sent out from the Kadesh, they were sent out from the Kadesh, older name in Genesis, the In Mishpat. Right, the well of judgment or the eye of judgment. Right, um, they were sent from this place to investigate, to search out, to seek out, to spy out, to investigate in the Hebraics and in the Afro Shemitic. One word covers all of those meanings right there. You understand? So they were to investigate. So when we say search it out, seek it out, it's an investigation. You understand? And then they came back and write, made a report. But what kind of report was it? Well, it's very clear. But the spies were sent out from Kadesh Barnea to investigate the promised land, and they returned to Moses at this place. When they returned to, to Musa, 
the head of the fraternal order of the Mewawian, the Levites, and of the Beta Israel, they return to the Kadesh, or the Kadesh, right? Numbers 13 and 26. Now, Miriam, Mariam, Miriam, the one who um, got in her brother's face, Moses' face, about the Ethiopian, his Ethiopian wife, Notice, remember when Jah said that, listen, get out my way. I want to destroy this people. They have no faith. They, they, they're nothing to me. I will make a great nation out of you, Moses. It, it's that Ethiopian Hebrew connection right there. Now, Miriam, you, you know, she reproached her brother, right? She reproached her brother because of his Ethiopian wife, right? And that wasn't on racial grounds. That was on more tribal and custom grounds right, customary grounds, right, um, it's almost like a black person from America and the West Indies in the eastern sense of it, you know what I'm saying, but Miriam, she died and she was buried at the Kadesh or at the Em Mishpat, that's where Miriam died in Numbers chapter 20 verse 1, Moses trespassed at the waters of the Meribah, when Moses made that trespass of Kadesh, very same place, very same place. The place is very, very significant in the scriptures. And so, because of that, because he, this people, remember, John told them, I'm going to destroy the people. They're provoking me too much. It's done. Son, Moses. Moses said, oh, what will the Egyptians think and have mercy? And they'll say that, that you wasn't able to, so from so on, and let your mercy triumph above your judgment. He made a wonderful case. But, but basically what John said, this is on you, Moses. Basically, because of your word, but this is on you. I told you I'll make a great nation out of you, an uh, Ethiopian Hebrew nation. So it wasn't to happen then because Moses said, no, I love this disobedient people right here. Have mercy. They, you know, what would other people say? His thought was, well, what will other people think? But John said, I'll make a great nation out of you. But now at the Meribah, what happens is interesting because Moses, I know this is coming up in our Torah portion, reading and feeding things, if you want to check it out for yourself, Numbers chapter 20, you understand, verses 10 to 13, that the people pissed him off so much. The same people that John on time and time again said, I can, I, I can get rid of this problem for you, you understand, and for all of us. And Moses was like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Okay. Now the people are talking about water, and we need water, and complaining about this. And Moses, instead of saying what John said to say, is that same virus, in a sense, of dishonor, in a sense, welled up in Moses, where Moses got pissed off. And instead of, instead of speaking John's word to the rock and letting the water come out the rock, he, he said, almost like, do I have to do everything? And he hit the rock. Like, do we have to do everything for you people? And true, the people had pissed him off, but then he could have dealt with that problem already. You see? You know, some people say, well, have mercy on these ones. Have mercy on those. Even after, you know, they've gone far out of jobs, what you call man, you're still rolling with them. They're going to get you into trouble too. Basically is what happened. This is kind of what happened to Moses right here. So Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. You've got to think about that. You know what I'm saying? Almost like it's like kind of like think about the company you keep on a certain level, faith basedly. You know what I'm saying? Numbers chapter 20, verses 10 to 13, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 51. Now, it was also at this place called the Kadesh, right? It was also at the Kadesh that the children of Israel, the Dekika Israel, that they were twice turned back from entering the Kana'anu, that twice. See, a lot of people talk about, okay, they wandered in the wilderness, but they were turned back twice. They got two touchbacks. You know what I'm saying? They were turned back twice from entering the Canaan, the Canaan, the Canaan land. Once at the beginning of their 40 years wandering, once at the very beginning in the wilderness, because of their, you got it, unbelief, their lack of faith, because they were faithless. In other words, they were fake. They were fake. To say that if they didn't have no faith, basically they were fake. You know, like, I'm Rasta, 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 and you're not building your house on job word. You're fake. You know what I mean? No matter how long you was faking it, you know what I mean? you fake still. You understand? Jaw word is what matters. So twice, once 
at the beginning, and, and, which was related in Numbers chapter 13 and 14, which we've been touching on in this particular, this particular Canaan, then Shashamani, Ethiopia today, or Shashamani now, or Shashamani now, Canaan, land of Canaan then, the, the 12 spies and the 10 lies, right? And there was one other time later when the king of Edom, the king of Edom, refused to allow them to pass through his country. It, you know, it almost reminds me of kind of like what happened with, with um, the, 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 the Jews in Israel with the black Jews in that sense too, you know, what's happening over there, like Edom, the Esau connection. Numbers chapter 20, verses 16 to 22 is the actual text of that. So this is also the same. So, so they were twice turned back at the Kadesh, at sanctuary. So they were in sanctuary. They were at sanctuary. You understand? And they tried to, to enter later on, but the king of Edom turned them back. Now, metaphysically, the meta, the overstanding, or really the full stand, the fullness of it is this, that the inherently pure and sinless and perfect ideal, ideal state that exists in the depths of the consciousness of every individual is what Kadesh signifies. That means that there's this holy sanctuary aspect, right? As the various thoughts of the consciousness come into the light of this sacred and holy phase of mind. So this, this land also signifies in the metaphysics a certain phase of mind, if you can receive it. They are measured up according to these high ideals. In other words, you measure according to this high, this holiness standard, in other words, right, as a judgment or as an adjustment. You see, they can either be judgment or adjustment. But see, if there's no adjustment, to say like a change, then there will be judgment, right? And so it takes place. And this is what's signified now by this primary name of the E Mishpat, the Ein Mishpat, the fountain of judgment, or really this is this also means I too. N note that. This word means fountain, but the very same word Ein or Ein also means I. So here we will interpret it as fountain of judgment, but it also signifies the eye of judgment, right? One of the names of Kadesh. So it's interesting to understand this area right here because there are various thoughts of the consciousness that come into the light of this sacred holy phase of mind, right? And they are measured up according to these high ideals, and a judgment or an adjustment takes place. And this is what's signified by in mishpat. The in mishpat, either it's going to be a judgment or an, uh, or an adjustment. You understand? Now, it is here. It is, it is here in consciousness. This, this, is, this is how we, as they say, appropriate. This is the Kabbalah of it. This is the Kabbalah of it. This is how we now appropriate the spiritual, metaphysical aspects, the personal in that sense, aspects. It is here that the carnal and the personal, the fleshy, the worldly, and the personal, that which falls short. What falls short? The carnal and the personal. You know, people will let you down. The flesh sometimes will fail. That which still falls short of the perfect law, of the perfect law, is revealed, is now revealed to us at this particular place within the consciousness. This particular holy place in the consciousness is revealed to us. And a further cleansing, a further cleaning or cleansing of the consciousness is set into action. Now, take note. Please take note of the different, very important occurrences that took place at Kadesh as well as, as at in Mishpat because all of them correspond to experiences that we go through. You understand? All of this corresponds to experiences that all of us as true and faithful call, chosen and, and faithful, you understand? All of us go through in putting off of the old man, putting forth of the old self, 
You know what Christ says? Anyone comes to me, he must deny himself. And we summarize that saying that's denying one's ego, one's ego, letting go of the ego. You understand? Of what you think the I is. Like people say, God's name is I am. So you run around, I am, I am. No, 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 no. It's who he is. John doesn't mean I am. John means he is. Ehia means Asha Ehia means I am that I am. Yahweh Yah means he is who he is. So they lost in mis in misunderstanding, mistranslation right there. You know, so that's leading to some of this. No wonder you see all these occult people, all these new ages talking about and it's in it's in the Bible, it's one name of God. I am. You know, and people are like, That's all I need to do. Okay. That's not all Josh says you need to do, but anyway, that we go through. So we go through this sort of a consciousness right here, right? When we seek to put off, you know what I'm saying? When we seek to put off the old man and that old man of chatiyat, that old man of sin, and what is original sin? Sin is ignorance. You understand? Ignorance coupled with disobedience. Ignoring. Look what the Israelites said. They ignored all that Jah had shown them. Jah says these ten times. You understand? I mean, not to mention these ten times and ten spies. Ten and ten. I mean, that, even that number ten is the number. Is it the ten? The ten words? The ten command? That is now judging these ten times and these ten lying witnesses that brought a false report that stopped the people from entering into that land of promise, the same way these false reports over 40 years have gone out concerning the land grant of his imperial majesty and concerning the greater inheritance of Africa for we. So these experiences, now taking this personally, in other words, now being able now to understand the, the bigger story of the Israelites, but now we say in Christ, how does this affect us, you know, on that one-on-one? -on -one? Because we, we, you have to remember, as above, so below, in that sense. So in the sense of as it is from his word perspective, now we on the microcosm, because this is the big picture, what, is the, what do we learn about this that we can interpret in Christ, receive in Christ, have that veil taken off so it becomes actionable? Well, the, 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 the experience right here is, is based on putting off of the old man, the old man of ignorance, and putting on Christos, and putting on the Moshiach, and putting on Christ. And because this is so very connected, we're going to just see if we have enough time to just touch on in, in Mishpat. Let's go to Ein Mishpat or Ein Mishpat. And here we go right here in the um, Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. The Hebrew means fountain of judgment, fount of rectitude, fountain of right, fount of justice. Now here it says the same place as Kadesh or a fountain in the city of Kadesh. So in other words, Ein Mishpat it's said to be now a fountain in the eye of a well in Oin Mishpat that was in this city that was known as Kadesh. It was there that um, Kedor Loamer, Kedor Loamer, and the kings that were with him smote the Amalekites. So the Amalekites, in the time of Father Abraham, in Genesis chapter 14, verse 7, got smote at this particular place. Right Now, metaphysically speaking, the significance of Ein Mishpat, the fountain of judgment, is that under the great law of adjustment, the great law of adjustment, when sense, sense, you know the senses, the man has five wise and five foolish senses. What are the five senses? Well, we know the five physical senses, but we also have five spiritual corresponding senses, right? But when under sense indulgence, that means just trusting the material, physical, worldly senses, reaches a certain point in its expression, almost like a boiling point in its expression, it destroys the very error desires that keep it active in consciousness, 
That's deep right there. Let's go over that one more time. That when sense indulgence, indulgence, this is what the internet, the media, this is what Babylon, this is what they're using right now, kind of sense, feelings, emotion, all that's tapping into your soul, your psyche. What is the soul? The soul is the mind, the emotion, and the feeling, trying to catch you there on the sense and sense indulgence. But when sense indulgence reaches a certain point in its expression, it destroys the very error desires that keep it active and conscious. In other words, it's like that proverbial serpent eating the tail. You understand? It eating its own tail in a sense. It, it destroys itself. These desires, right, these desires, they die for lack of fuel to keep them alive. It's like what we're seeing in this world system right now. They want to continue this old world Gentile system and try to call it a new world order. But these desires, they die for lack of fuel. See, the, discover, the, 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 the disguise they use right now is so about, oh, we're doing it to get energy. We need to get oil and such and such. You, you get the idea of fuel. But they die for lack of fuel to keep them alive. Evil, in other words, simplified is its own destruction. And then they say, see uh, Kedor Laomer and Kadesh. Well, we touched on Kadesh. We might touch on Kedor Laomer, which was one of those um, particular kings um, from such a time. And uprightness, uprightness, true justice, becomes manifest. In other words, that's what the idea of the fount of rectitude, fount of right, fount of of, 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 of justice. So there's probably more that we need to touch on that particular point right there, but we want to give uh, uh, an up to this particular reasoning right here that even though it's dealing with a whole group of people, like we are a whole group of people, it's saying that there's an individual, you understand, or an indivisible dual, you know, an individual if you want to call it, responsibility upon each of I and I, you understand, each of I and I in faith, in true faith. And if we each focus, you understand, on, on keeping, getting our house in order and keeping our house in order, recognizing his standard and learning, the key thing is learning from these mistakes because it's still in a sense, I'm not going to say it boggles the mind, that's not the proper word for it, but it's just a really a curiosity, 12 spies, going into the command. Look at this. And then 12 pioneer settlers in Shashimani. And we see the same kind of, of false witnesses, the majority of false witnesses versus the minority of true witnesses. Break it down 10 and 2. And it's the very same way in, in, in this portion, Shalak, with the 10 false witnesses and the 2 true and the same way with the Shashimani land grant of his imperial majesty through the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. It's one and the same. And yet folks will play ignorant to what the Constitution and bylaws say when it says right here, when it says we, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. And then when you turn the page and you go to Article 1, Section 1, Section 2A, it says to uh, under the aims and objects of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty of Ethiopia to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture among its members to correct abuses. Now, over that, correct abuses, if you've paid attention with the Ayn Mishpat, what we just said about the Ayn Mishpat and, and the Kadesh, you understand? There is that judgment and adjustment to relieve oppression or downpression and carve for ourselves and our posterity. That's talking about the children. Remember the little ones, what Josh said to them? Because you made your little ones the prey, what's going to happen to you? Our posterity, a destiny comparable with our idea of perfect manhood and God's purpose in creating us, 
You see, now that right there, perfect manhood, God's purpose in creating. When, when we, what's our idea of perfect manhood? It's in, it's, it's in a name. Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, perfect manhood. Perfect man. See, when we keep it in a divine heritage context. But if you ask a lot of these these ones who are who are like the lying witnesses, you know what I'm saying, or the or the false spies that have discouraged the black we the black people, and even to a point that discouraged many of we the Rastafari of the we the black people from this and God's purpose. So what is God's purpose in creating us? This is not a matter of philosophy. You know, this is not an issue of philosophy. God created us to look at the birds and the bees. No, you know, we have spe- according to our divine heritage, we have specific, you know, specific.